Well, today we're going to talk about table level validations. There are times when you create a table and you want to make sure that the data that the users are inputting into that table are valid for the use that is being done for your application when you deploy it. So I'm going to pull up my database that I have for the demo here. One thing that you need to remember as you're doing validations, you, number one, you cannot refer to other tables or other forms here at the table level. Now, there is more flexibility at the form level, and you may choose that your validations need to take place on the form controls rather than in the table itself. But there are very useful validations that can be done at the table level that you'd probably want to put there because it's quicker and it's more efficient. And it's consistent all the way through your database application. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, put in a, a title field. It'll be a short text. Now, I can't put a validation rule on a text field. I can't tell it the length needs to be such and such or anything, but I can on my form. So I'll reserve this one for the form, but I do want the table, the title to be required. So as I highlight the, the field that I just wrote, this field down here, this uh, property down here called required, I'm going to go ahead and set that one to yes. The next field that I want to put in is, oh, let's say I've got a project start date. So I want to make that a date time. And I'm going to have an end date. And that'll be a date time. I'm going to put in a budget. And that'll be a currency. And I'm going to be budget spent. And that'll also be a currency. So there's some fields that I can play around with. And so let's go ahead and put some validations in and show you show you how this works. So let's say my start date. Now, if I come down here, there's a, an item in my properties window called validation rule. Now the validation rule I'm going to place here is going to be greater than or equal to date. Now I could have used now, but now it all, always is in the past. No matter how early or quick I save the record, it, it will end up being in the past. But date is, is today's date. So if I want to start the project today, today's date, it'll always be equal or greater than today's date. So I'm, I'm safe with the word date. The validation text is the start date needs to be in. Uh, in the future, or let's say cannot be in the, there we go. And I'm going to put a period after that. Now my end date. Now I cannot down here refer to another field. That's just one of the restrictions here at the table level. But I can do it a different way. There are also table level validations that you can use. So I'm going to bring up my property sheet here. And if I go over here, there's a validation rule and a validation text here at the table level. So I'm going to say in my end date here, I need to have end, end date greater than start date. And then my validation text is going to be uh, and date needs to be after start date. Okay. So in other words, I'm going to start this project, um, but my assumption in the program is going to be that it's going to take at least till tomorrow to get done with the project. So my start and end date need to be different. They need to be staggered. So that is a table level validation. Now, part of the challenge with a table level validation is that you can only have one of them. And so if I have my budget and budget spent here, um, I'm going to have to deal with the budget spent needing to be less than my total budget at the form level to throw an error message out that says, hey, you've overspent your budget. You can't spend that much or something. I'll handle that at the table, um, at, at my form level. 
okay? But my budget here, I know that all of my budgets are going to be at least a certain amount of, of money. So I'm going to say greater, everything has to be greater than or equal to at least 10,000. Well, no commas there. At least 10,000. Budget needs to be at least 10,000. Okay? And so there's my error message. Now, do all these work? Hey, let's go check it out. Okay? So I'm going to hit, I'm going to hit my table view, and it says I've got to save the table first. It saved. Good. That means, if it saved, that means that I didn't have any errors in syntax in any of those errors. Now, I have created typos before as I was, as I have done this in the past. And believe me, when you start saving the table, it brings up the syntax, gives you an error message, tells you which field uh, has uh, a syntax error on it. So my title field, it's required. So I'm going to try to bypass it and see what happens. Okay, I'm going to put in my start date. And my start date, I'm going to put as yesterday. And I'm going to tab out of it. And it says start date cannot be in the past. Okay, so let's try putting in today and tab out of it. Okay, it'll take today. Now let's go ahead and try to put this the end date in the past or before my start date. Uh-oh, it took it. So I need to go check that to see what I what I need to do to fix that problem. Now my budget, I'm gonna say my budget is only gonna be a thousand. I, I left off a zero. Uh-oh, needs to be at least 10,000. Very good. I'll put this extra zero on there. Hey, it likes that. And um, of course, my budget spent, I've got to deal with that on a form. So it's not going to give me an error message, even if I put a less amount there. Um, but it's trying to tab off of the record. And it says, hey, wait a minute, you don't have a title in there yet. So let's go put a title in there. And this is uh, first project. And if I put that title in there, it goes at, oh, end date needs to be after start date. Now, notice that the error message came up after I tried to get off of the record. And it went from left to right, meaning it found the title was still an error because it is a validation that was a record level validation. So it, did, it wanted to go to the next record and it couldn't because of the title. Now my um, end date error message happened when I tried to go off the record again and says I've got to fix that before I can save this record. So let's go ahead and say, let's let's put it as today, check the condition where it's equal to. And it says, nope, it has to be after. So let's go back here, make it a day after, and it'll save the record. So that's how to do quick and easy validations. Now, remember, you do validations on number fields, which are date, time, and integers, and numbers, and currencies, and can be an incredibly useful tool as you try to keep consistency throughout your database. So remember, if you like what you see here, please hit the subscribe button. We're trying to grow the channel and get you better content. So if you help me out there, I'd appreciate it, and we'll hope to see you again later. Thanks.